welcome to the show. I'm Sherry Schroeder. Uh, a couple things I want to talk about. You know, I was looking over the topics of the week. What seems to be going on in newsland with the mainstream media. And, of course, I just look at it online because I don't watch the crap on TV. Uh, but it seems to be the hot topic this week is Susan Rice, and I just had to laugh. Susan Rice, we go way back. You know, that woman is has been a part of Obama's team since he was in the White House. And they have a, an inner circle, inner group of people. And she was very well a part of that. I mean, if Valerie Jarrett wasn't telling him what to do, it was Susan Rice. You know, and him and Obama and Hillary had a love-hate relationship. You know, they... That's exactly what you would call it, a love-hate, because uh, Hillary's hard to deal with. Nobody wanted to deal with Hillary. And so, uh, you know, happy to deal with her was, wasn't was anybody's lucky day. And so, but they had a round, they had a, a he, he was big on groupthink. And he only liked his inner circle. And so they would get together all the time. And 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 in the Obama White House, everybody did what everybody wanted to do. There was no one person overseeing anything, and they didn't tell Obama what they were doing. You know, Hillary acted like she was president and she ran it from the State Department, and Susan Rice was like, "Okay, I'll take the hate list and start ordering assassinations on Obama's top ten." Because she came after me several times, and every time she'd, she'd try to come after me, you know, her whole plot and plan would practically blow, blow up in her face. Uh, but it always came back to her. It was always Susan called that one, Susan called that one. And I remember clearly when Benghazi happened, because Obama didn't even know what was going on. They, he, Hillary led the charge on all of that, on everything Benghazi. And when the whole thing went down, they just called Obama into the room and let him watch it. They all watched it on, on TV, the big screen, little screen TV they have in there. They all sat and watched it go down. But he wasn't the one that led the charge on that, and they've been screaming it for years. It was Hillary. That whole Benghazi thing was Hillary. Susan Rice is just another, well, I don't know what you want to call it, she likes to get involved with things. She likes to be one of the top people in charge. And so, you know, she would she would help plot and plan assassinations against their top ten list. And in the Obama house, they always had a top ten assassination list. And Chavez was at the top. I was at number two. And Richard Manning was at number three. And not Richard Manning... Uh, David Manning, Pastor David Manning. And he was at number three. And so they finally got Chavez. And so for the longest time, they kept coming after after me and Manning. It was funny. <laughs> you know, the Lord protects his people. And, and they learned this. They learned that quickly. And so they would go after three, four, five, and down to ten. And... <laughs> You know, because yeah, me and Manning are both both still alive, both still doing our thing. I've never talked to the man, never met him. I find them amusing. I like to watch some of his videos. Because what you want to do is, if you want to get on a, on the top ten of murder list for Obama, mock him. Because he could not stand to be mocked and made fun of. Couldn't stand it. He's the one who had Jay Leno, Jay Leno fired because Jay Leno kept coming after him and mocking him and making fun of him. And so he had Jay Leno fired. It's like, well, he's got some pull. How come Trump can't get all these idiots in New York making fun of him fired, you know? Bring Leno back. Really piss Obama off. <laughs> Bring Jay Leno back on nighttime TV and get rid of Kimmel. He's about to lose his mind anyway. The things you have to do to get that kind of position now is just crazy. Crazy, because nighttime talk show hosts are handlers. 
and their their coders, like David Letterman. Letterman, he was a coder. He would send signals and codes during his show to to the Illuminati and those who would know what those are. You know, I, I'm that's way above my pay grade stuff, but they always signal and code each other. And so Letterman was the main one. And I don't know I don't know about Leno's involvement with all that. I just know Obama hated him because he was always making fun of him. That's why he hated Pastor Manning. He would call him the long-legged Mac Daddy. And he hated that. And so uh, they can't stand to be Mac because they're somewhat narcissistic. Completely narcissist. And and what's really bad is when you've got a narcissist on top of sociopath who can't control what and who controls him. You know, you have some of these humans, and I, I de- I've dealt with this for years, that they're walk-ins. They can be used as walk-ins. Their bodies are like vessels. And demonic entities and alien hosts can can what they call walk in, take over that person's human body and operate and work through them. Okay, so that was Obama to the max because they would just make clones of Obama and then he would get walked in. These other beings would take over his body and and work and operate through him. So you never know exactly which Obama you're dealing with or what you're dealing with uh, because he's like one of these open vessels. Somebody was asking me after yesterday's show, can all shapeshifters shape in, into anything they want? No. Obviously, Lucy can, Lucifer, because he's the devil. He can, he can, he can show up as a woman in red shoes or, or a young athlete. That's the one he typically shows up in is like the athletic, blonde-looking guy, the real handsome, good-looking guy. That's the one they usually see when they call him up at satanic rituals. They get the handsome, charming Lucifer. They don't they don't get the real one. They don't get the real ugly reptile looking being that he is. They don't see that one. I know they have all these depictions of Baphomet and that was just a made up drawing. That's not even a real thing, real being. It's just a personification of a goat. Lilith and, and Lucifer all in one type of being just a personification he can do anything he can show up in any way he wants other people have to are confined to the human bodies now if, you, if a person gets soul scalped that means they've got a serpent and I have that article on my, my website about soul scalping how they stick the snake down your throat it looks like a long slimy worm like a a copperhead. You ever see a copperhead? They look like long worms. At least when they're born, because I see them all the time out here. And I'm not sure it's a snake. <laughs> and you look at it slipping across the sidewalk or whatever, and it's a snake, but it looks like a long worm. Those are copperheads. That's what they look like. That's what the father showed me. They. I'm not saying it's a copperhead. I'm just saying something like it. It's some kind of snake, serpent, and they shove it down the person's throat. And that's one way of how they soul scalp them. They also have the, uh, what uh, Donald Marshall talks about, the, the pro, proboscis, uh, uh, proboscis, the quill of a reptile that comes off of their forehead and they put it behind the eye of a human. A lot of people get scalped that way. A lot of people, when you look at their eyes, especially celebrities and sports figures, and one eye looks more round and awake than the other one does. One looks more lazy than the other one. It's usually because the the one's got a a quill behind it or a chip implant, even. The chip implant look is like uh, when you're looking at somebody and their eyes are so black they look like glass and they look like they could stare right through to your soul. They look like they're staring right through you that that deep psychopath look chip implanted people can do that I've noticed that but so can the 
soul scalp, so it's hard to tell. But you can always tell if something's wrong because if a person's eyes are the mirror of their soul, then if their soul is dark, you're going to see that through their eyes, that penetrating glare, that, that evil, that wickedness, because their soul is evil. So they have, they have different ways of taking over humans. The one thing, um, but they're limited to that human. They can't take that human body and change it into a, 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 become a female or something like, you know, whatever they want to do with it. They're confined to that human's body. So Lucifer doesn't confine himself to any one human body. He, he's not even typically in a human body. Uh, very rarely he takes the form of a human. And when he does, he doesn't do it for very long. It's very uncomfortable for him, he says. So Now, Lilith, she works through her sisterhood. And this is the growing trend in Hollywood. And if you watch all these high-ranking female celebrities, J-Lo, I think she's the highest. No, I could be wrong. I don't think it's Beyonce. They give her the credit, kudos like she is, but I don't think she is. She's just a high-ranking transvestite with Jay-Z. J-Lo is a witch. To be at the top of Hollywood, you have to be a witch. To be on the A-list, you have to be a witch. To be on the B-list, you have to be a, a, a witch working your way up. You have to be a witch. That's what the sisterhood is. The sisterhood is witches. It's the witchhood. And you have to work your way up the ladder. Now, at the top of the levels, the, the very top of sisterhood, Madonna and J-Lo, you, and what's her name? I've seen her. Um, she was attacking me one time. Um, Angelina Jolie. They're all very high up in the sisterhood thing. Okay. My point being, when you get that high up, I don't know if it's Lilith or what happens, but they turn into vampires. They're vampires. Those women are vampires. I heard Selena Gomez was a vampire. So it could be something you embrace or adopt when you first join the sisterhood, or it's something that you just become when you're at the top of it. Because Selena Gomez is pretty young. <laughs> she hasn't earned her stripes and experience in years yet like the others. So I'm assuming if she's a vampire, it's something she just embraced as a child or something. Uh, because I've heard from my, my government friend. She was a vampire. I think I've, I've talked about that before on my show about her. Uh, and I, in the Avril Lavigne, I heard she was a vampire. They all get involved with that sisterhood. And you only get invited out uh, to the castle in France. The Mother of Darkness castle is, held in, is, is located in France. And that Mother of Darkness, that whole castle, I can't remember the name of it, uh, but it's dedicated to Lilith. And so only the very top, top of the witches, like uh, Bush Sr.'s wife, Barbara Bush, I think she's the highest ranking. I'm, I'm sure it's a Rothschild, too, but in America, I think the highest ranking is Barbara Bush. She's a mother of darkness. Hillary Clinton, the original, or one of them, was a mother of darkness. Trying to think of any names. I don't know if any of the witches or the sisterhood, like Madonna and J Lo, Angelina, I don't know if they're mothers of darkness or not. But if they go out to the castle in France, you better believe that they're they're high up because it's it's a, a hand picked invitation type thing. You only get to go out that if you've obtained a certain rank and have proven yourself. Because Lilith is not a human. Lilith can't even materialize in this dimension unless she's taking over somebody's body. Remember, the, like, like Obama, who's an access to the show, someone can take over his body? Lilith will use her, her, uh, she calls them her bitches. She'll use them. She could take over their bodies and 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 work through them like soul scalping possession, but only temporary. Uh, because it'd be very hard for her to materialize in this dimension because she's 
she's kind of in between a fourth and fifth dimension type being. And so a human in the third dimension is not going to be able to see her. She would be very uh, pillowy-like, wispy-looking. But she likes to go on hunts. And so she'll they'll go on vampire hunts. They'll go out vampiring. That's her thing. And so, you know, that's... I don't even know why I'm talking about that. Uh, but that's her thing, and that's what they do, and that's that's the sisterhood. And you can't get acting job and modeling jobs and all these fame and fortune without joining the sisterhood if you're a female. But that's what's at the top of the ranks. That's what... You go in thinking you're just going to learn witchcraft, you're going to learn... Well, I don't know what they do, witch things, whatever they do. Curses, chants skip around a black kettle, a black pot. I don't know what they do. But they climb up the ladders. Even the female TV judges, you see, Judge Judy, Judge Milia, and the other females, I don't even remember their names. They're all witches. They're all witches. There's a group down in Miami, and they're all, I think most of them are pretty much out of that group in Miami. They were coming up against me for a long time. But yeah, that's what you do. You sell your soul. And the thing that none of them were banking on was and was they would get soul scalped. You know, you, they sign their soul for fame and fortune and expect to live a long life with fame and fortune. And then when they die, they resign to the fact that they're going to go to hell because they sold their soul to the devil. Well, what happens now is that when you sell your soul to the devil, you immediately get soul scalped. And so all these people now, and I was warning about this last year because it was going on rampant last year. Everybody on the list, everybody in the sisterhood, everybody in masonry, everybody in the so-called brotherhood, everybody at that point who hadn't been soul scalped was getting taken over. There was a list. And the enforcers, which are men in black, because that's basically what I saw happening to... Just the the person I, I I've talked about before, where they entered her home and shoved a serpent down her throat. Um, they were like the Men in Black. They were these huge beings. They're like they're like the enforcers. They had lists. Anybody who was on the Sisterhood, anybody who was on the Brotherhood list, all got soul scalped. And so everybody you see is is, is basically just a fake human anymore. The real person's gone. Any kind of realness to anything is over. Look at the politicians. Everybody's a puppet on a string. They might as well have a, 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 somebody's hand stuck to their back. They're being controlled. I gave up on, on the news because it was just a script. It was, it was turning into a script reading. And some of it was so obvious. Because, you know, it takes forever for anything to ever happen in the government. Like, you know, bureaucracy used to be the the, the, the ball on everyone's chain trying to get something through with the government because everything was so slow. Uh, but now, you know, since, since last year, the election campaign, everything seems to be happening really quickly, don't you think? I mean, in one day, who was it, Trey, Trey Gowdy? Uh, wanted uh, Vince Foster's body exhumed from the grave and sent out the order and it was exhumed in one day, really? And they did the autopsy and he was back in his grave and like the end of the day, really? I mean, is that script reading at its finest or what? Nothing ever happens that quick. And then they found somebody else's body in the casket underneath Vince Foster's body was the body of an intern that they'd been looking for. They had killed her and stuffed her in Vince, Vince Foster's casket. Crazy, huh? Don't be an intern in D.C. That's like being a scientist. That's like an early retirement plan. They're going to kill you. So anyway, some of you looking for something to do, get your cameras on TV and start getting pictures and video of newscasters and sports athletes and commercials. Daytime commercials 
are crazy because they're all clones. They're synthetic humans. It's crazy what they do to daytime TV, the commercials. I mean, I can't do everything at once. And so, yeah, that'd be something to do. Getting video and pictures of these fakes on TV. You can send them to me at sherry at shriner.com. I'll put together vids, videos. But it's just, you know, it's all fake, folks. It's all fake. All the humans were, were, were you see on TV, they're fake. So, this administration hasn't been as much fun for me because I'm not on... Obama, or Trump doesn't have a kill list that I know of. He doesn't have one. So... I'm not on that, because it doesn't exist. <laughs> and I don't have any contacts there, so... It's kind of like whatever. It's kind of different, you know? He's definitely not aligned with Bush and Obama. Because, you know, eight years of Bush, and then eight years of the other Bush, and then eight years of Obama, it was like nothing missed to be, you know? I had contacts, I had sources, they were always trying to kill me. And now Trump takes office and everything has just stopped. Everything's done a 180. So yeah, it's a bit different to get used to. Bit different. I just look at the satellite attacks. But that's not Trump. Trump's not a hater. He's not a Sherry hater. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> <laughs> but Elon Musk and DARPA, and, the, and they're all related. Elon Musk and DARPA and Bush Sr. and SpaceX, they have their own thing going. It doesn't get any more wicked than DARPA. So anything anyone associated with DARPA uh, should be our focus, especially with just war, uh, with Oregon and exposing them. They're the number one people behind trafficking in this country. DARPA. It's behind the Pentagon. Because you're not going to do anything without the Pentagon's blessings. And DARPA apparently has it. They're the number one behind Pentagon. Would love to take DARPA out. And DARPA's kind of everywhere. They've got their uh, main place in Montauk in Long Island. And they've also got a new my lab in Roswell, New Mexico. And wherever else they are, those are the only two places uh, that I know of specific of DARPA. But I haven't done I haven't done much research on them. I just listen to what I hear. And I heard that they had a new base in Roswell. So that's a target for people who are looking for an Oregon mission. And we need to get back to Dulce Base in Dulce, New Mexico, because it's been years since I was there, and I'm, I'm sure it needs reinforced with some new Oregon. We need to reinforce the areas we've already gotten, folks, because, you know, when you haven't been somewhere in 10 years, back and reinforce what you've done. And that was the only way, because we had shut down Dulcie for four years. And they must have found the Oregon we put out there or something, because they eventually got Dulcie back up and running. Yeah. We had it shut down for a while. They can't stand the Oregon. They can't breathe. It burns them. Especially get it in the water. Because the grays like to soak in the water, and it's like acid, so they can't soak in it because it's like burning their skin. Go back and reinforce areas, folks. We need definitely need Roswell done, and Dulce done again. Also, Los Alamos. Los Alamos has been quiet. You know, I haven't heard a thing about Los Alamos in years. Ever since they were kept touting about them being. The most secured base and facility in the world was Los Alamos. And I drove right onto it at 1 o'clock in the morning. 
<laughs> yeah, real secure base. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Funny. That looks like a college campus. Almost like a, a dormitory type thing set up. But the real stuff's underneath. It's underground. The whole hub. From uh, Denver Airport to Dulce to Los Alamos. Taos, New Mexico. We were in Taos. The first time I ever saw a post office van with a ladder on top of it. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you what, if the post van needs a ladder to get to a mailbox, he's in trouble, right? <laughs> What's he delivering to the birdhouses now? That was funny, because it was like when we got to our hotel, it was like an avalanche of FBI and alphabet soup agencies, and some of the stuff they came driving in was really funny. <laughs> some of it was really cliche, like the flower trucks. Yeah. 1-800-Flowers. <laughs> yeah, good days. Good old days. But we need to continue our war against them, folks. And they don't like the orgone and causes them to malfunction. It causes the synthetics to malfunction. Hillary was having problems with hers and they're saying, oh, it's her, it's her Kuru disease or Parkinson's. And, you know, very well could have been, but I also know she had an extremely hard time every time she was in an area where we had orgone. Every time she went into one of those crazy fits of hers, we had orgone there. And then that one, that one escapade of hers, where she was nodding her head and said, "You have to try the tea, uh, try the chai or whatever." Chai is another name for orgone energy. So I thought that was interesting that she mentioned the word chai. Chi, chi. Try the chi. Something. It was crazy. I think we've had a lot of success shutting them down because they're not coming out so much with them anymore. When they do, but they're in controlled situations when they do. TV in a studio, something they can control. So, anyway, as I said, keep your eyes on the skies, folks, because the only thing, the things we're waiting on that mean the most to us are going to be signs in the skies. You know? Archaea's arrival. Ashtar arrival, those kinds of things. Because <laughs> the whole deep state thing, uh, I don't think. Uh, I think this will probably. Hopefully, this is the last month we have to deal with it. But you have to understand how huge deep state is. It's the entire CIA. It's the CIA, because all of these news announcers and news anchors are continually spitting hate. That are the ultimate leftist liberals. Those are CIA. They're agents. Those are just roles they play as anchors and celebrities. They're CIA agents. You know, when you look at some of the IQs of these people, and see, this is something the father showed me, and I only have a few minutes left. I'll, 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 I'll spit this out and I'm going to end the show. Uh, but, like, people like Ashton Kutcher and Alex Trebek. And, and you know, game show hosts and celebrities, when they're young, they're brought in and they're trained as CIA agents. And at that time, they're nobodies. They're just kids looking for a job, signing on, signing on for the CIA, whatever. And then when they're when they're trained as agents, and they they send them out into the field. Sometimes they'll prop them up and they'll give them a Hollywood job. And, you know, because the other day someone, we were all laughing because they were saying that when Obama was arrested and taken to Japan, Scott Baio was involved with the arrest. And everyone was like, what's Scott Baio doing there? It was kind of funny. That's because he's probably CIA. But we, that's the whole intent of why they do that. So when you when you look at something going down, and you're like, hey, I just saw Scott Baio arrest Obama. No one's going to believe you. It sounds crazy. This is how they work. That's how they work. So a lot of people in a lot of crazy places have always been CIA. That's 
how they do it. It's part of this character, this character stuff I was talking about. You build a brand, build a character. That's what they do. You know, I took a uh, when I was in when I was in college, criminal justice class. Professor wanted everybody to take to fill out an application, a questionnaire for the CIA. And I was a freshman. I was like, what? <laughs> CIA ain't working the CIA. Uh, only because I knew then it was so corrupt. I, even as a Christian, you know, I'm just a young kid in college. And the questions on their their questionnaire was, would you lie for your country? And I'm thinking, well, Abraham lied. Said Sarah wasn't his wife, so I guess I could lie for my country. A little white lie won't do anything. So I said, "Yeah, I'll lie for my country." I guess Abraham lied. And then it's like, "Would you steal for your country?" And I'm thinking, "Well, that's not so bad. I guess I could steal for my country." And then they go on to, "Would you sleep with someone?" Like, no, that, that drew the line right there. That was right there. I want you to sleep. Could you imagine? Having to, you know, having a job where they'd want you to sleep with some fat slob dignitary just to get information out of them. I just couldn't think of anything more appalling. I just practically got up and walked out of the room right then. I mean, I just, I was too moral and ethical for that. But that's, I don't even know what's, what else was on the questionnaire after that. You got to draw the line somewhere. But that's the kind of people they look for, people that will do anything. No morals, no ethics. Just a blank slate that they can train and use for absolutely anything they want to use. And that's why they have MK Ultra because they have to mind control women to do that kind of immoral stuff. <laughs> You're going to sleep with these fat, ugly politicians. You're going to have to use mind-controlled, mind-erased bimbos for that. And then the problem is these, these women grow out of the programming when they're older and, and start to remember things. That has to be appalling. That has to be so appalling. Anyway, folks, be back tomorrow at noon. Till then, everybody, i tell you what I'm going to talk about, but I have no idea. I don't ever know until I start the show. Till then, everybody, God bless.